And I remember in John chapter 8, Jesus told the people, if the Son has set you free, you shall be unquestionably free indeed. And they said, we were never slaves to anybody. You know, we are children of Abraham and Jesus. I mean, you just don't know how you bound you are. You're actually children of the devil, you know. But if the Son has set you free, how many has ever experienced freedom? Okay, everybody shout freedom. Yeah. I want to live in freedom. Yeah. I want to walk in freedom. Yeah. I want to stay free. In this freedom, Christ has made us free and completely liberated us. Stand fast then and do not be hampered and held and snared and submit again to the yoke of slavery which you have once put off. The King James would call it yoke of bondage. Now turn back to Galatians 3 and ask yourself this question. What is this yoke of bondage? What would be the yoke that will cause you to lose your freedom? What would be the yoke to cause you to lose the freedom wherewith Christ has set you free? Chapter 3. Okay, I'm reading King James. He's really going to zap you right between the ears. <laughs> oh, you poor, silly, thoughtless unreflecting, senseless Galatians. Now that's a way to address your, 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 your assembly. Huh? Okay. I will not dare to say that. In South Africa, you will sit without a church, man. <laughs> you senseless idiots. You know, the, is it the Moffat translation that says, dear idiots, you know? Dear idiots. And the message, you know, it's, it's tough stuff. Paul was rough, man. He said, I was to Peter in the, in the public, man. I told him, you hypocrite. Okay? The first pope. I mean, you know, listen to this. Who has fascinated or bewitched you unto whom right before your very eyes Jesus Christ was openly, graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified? Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Everybody say Holy Spirit. Now tonight we're going to touch on this and I trust God to really speak to your hearts. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the law and doing its works? Or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? Was it from observing a law of rituals or from a message of faith? Are you so foolish, so senseless, so silly? Having begun your new life with the Holy Spirit. Everybody says Holy Spirit. Are you now reaching perfection by dependence on the flesh? Now that flesh there is the law. Have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for nothing to no purpose? If it really is to no purpose and in vain, then does he who, oh man, I remember a couple of months ago we touched on this. Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit. Everybody says Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. Supplies you with his Holy Spirit and works powerfully miraculously everybody says powers and miracles <laughs> among you does he do so on the grounds of your doing what the law demands or because of your believing and adhering to and trusting and relying on the message that you have heard anybody in the house if you've heard anything would you say, Lord, I, 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 I hear, I receive, I see there must be something in here that I haven't seen before and I want to take it here tonight. The yoke must be the law then. The freedom must be the Holy Spirit then. And that Holy Spirit is more than freedom. It also is powers and miracles. Did you see that here tonight? So miracles, the Holy Spirit, the supply of the Holy Spirit is what causes us to have powers and miracles in our midst. And that brings us into a place of total freedom. But the yokes of the law destroys that freedom, blocks the power, and before we know it, we have not freedom of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So grace would be on that side of the freedom of the Holy Spirit, the powers and the miracles. So tonight for our teaching, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 15. Now Acts chapter 15, people were receiving the Holy Spirit. Now these were not Jews. They were not of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. These were Gentile nations that all of a sudden started receiving the Holy Spirit. And then the, the Jewish people started coming to the 
Christian people and said, hey, it's not right for Gentiles to receive the Holy Spirit. So the Jews, as well as the Jewish Christians, started attacking the apostles and they said the following, how could you pray for Gentiles to receive the Holy Spirit. It's not right for them to receive the Holy Spirit. And how come you allow the Gentiles not to keep the law? So immediately the Jewish Christians started going back to the yoke part. They didn't want people to have the freedom. Let's do this. And God who is acquainted with, verse 8, and understands the heart, bore witness to them, giving them the Holy Spirit as he also did to us. And he made no difference between us and them, but cleanse their hearts by faith. It was his faith. faith. By a strong and welcome conviction that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting a yoke on the necks of the disciples, such as neither our forefathers nor we ourselves were able to endure? But we believe that we are saved through the grace. It was His grace. The undeserved favor and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Then the whole assembly remained silent, and they listened attentively as Barnabas and Paul rehearsed what signs and wonders God had performed through them among the Gentiles. Did anybody see that? Immediately when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the Gentiles, the Jewish Christian immediately wanted to put a yoke on the Christians. And this is the result or this is the response of the disciples. They said, our forefathers couldn't bear the yoke. We couldn't bear the yoke. Why do you not want to put a yoke on, put a yoke, put a yoke on the people, you know, that, you know, are not even Jews, you know. And then they started reciting what powers, what miracles, and they put something with it. What signs? God wrought amongst the Gentiles. And they said, do you not know that they received it by faith? And then he adds the word grace. So we know we are saved by faith through grace or by grace through faith it's not of ourselves so how can we have a supernatural supply of the holy spirit with powers signs and miracles by staying in the freedom by not allowing the yoke to come upon us again so the law we need to stay away from that thing when god started speaking to me about grace he used two stories out of the bible but the one that gripped me the most was the story of david and I spoke on this grace message, man, and I remember it was one of the first series I preached. It was eight tapes on the grace of Almighty God here in the early 80s. And I preached this message on grace. And I said, in Acts chapter 7, the Bible says, The ark of the covenant was with the people of Israel till the time of David, who desired to build a house for God. But he found grace. And God said, You can't build me a house. But Solomon built him a house. But God does not dwell in temples made with hands. I'll try and quote it once more, okay? It says, The Ark of the Covenant was with the children of Israel from the days of Moses till the days of David, who desired to build a house for God. But he found grace. Now listen to, he wanted to build a house for God. God said, no, you found grace in my sight. Then Solomon built him a house, but God does not dwell in that temple made with hands. For you know you're not that you are the temple. And then in that same scripture it says, you know, Simeon prophesied how God will come back and restore the tabernacle of David. Now how would God restore a tabernacle which was never built? So that tabernacle must be a revelation of something that is unseen. So I preach on that tabernacle is the one that is called grace. By grace are ye saved through faith that not of yourself, it's a gift of God. And God talked about the grace that David has found. The mercies of David will be restored. So David couldn't build a house for God because he found grace. And God said, under grace, you can't build a temple for me. You can build a place for you. So we build a building so that we can come together. We don't build a building for God. I meet God in the bushes, man. I meet God in my bed. I meet God driving in my car. I can meet God anywhere. So I don't build a house for God. I build a house for us. But David wanted to build a house for God. But he found grace. 
But these people that still build a house for God, they want God's house so that God can appear. No, God appears in and through men. Man. And I preached this message and I was so excited about the grace that David had the revelation of, you know. And how God's going to restore the temple or the tabernacle of David. And a man stood up in the meeting and he challenged me in front of everybody. He said, no brother, I want to read you a scripture. And he turned there to the Old Testament and he said, and David wanted to build a house for God. And the prophet came and said, you have blood on your hands. You can't build me a house. Oh man, and I was taken aback. I mean, I mean. You know, he killed a man. He killed many men. <laughs> he killed many men. You know, but this was for about a certain instance where he killed this man. And he said, you have blood on your hands. And this guy to him, he said, brother, you just misquoted the word of God. David couldn't build a house for God because he had blood on his hands. And, you know, for a split second, I was zoop. And then I heard God speaking through me. He said, the law says you have blood on your hands. You can't build my house. Grace says, how can you build me a house? That was my first deep, 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 deep revelation on grace. You may, I don't know if it's so deep to you, but to me, it shocked me out of my wits. You know, I was preaching grace. This was about the seventh tape in the eight tape series. And when this guy challenged me, I said, the law says, you have blood. You can't build me a house. Grace says, how can you build me a house? I want to dwell in you. I want to be with you. I want to be among you. You can't build me a house. You have found grace. Okay. Now, are you still in Acts 15? Yeah. Look at that. Verse 16. After this, I will come back and I will rebuild the house of David, which has fallen. I will rebuild its very ruins. I will set it up again. <laughs> what is it that God is setting up again? People that will understand it's by grace that we live. It's by grace that we exist. It's by grace that we walk. Everything that we have by grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Oh, it's grace, grace, grace. No, Paul says, hey, hey. Listen. Paul says, you stupid idiots. You senseless, unreflecting Galatians. You must read your heads. How come you've received freedom of the Holy Spirit with power and signs and wonders? How is it that you want to go put a yoke again on your shoulders? How is it that you want to try and keep the law? Our far forefathers couldn't keep the law. We couldn't keep the law. How is it that you want to tell other people now to have a yoke of the law upon them? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And in this freedom, get the Holy Spirit, get the power, get the signs, get the wonders. And if you get it, it's by grace. Come on, everybody, grace. It's only by grace. Okay, let's go to that Ephesians 2 chapter, man. Hallelujah. Grace, man. Grace is nothing like the grace message. But remember, if you're viewing via satellite and internet, if you preach the grace message, I've touched now on two scriptures already that says when the message of grace is preached, there's power, science, wonders, and miracles. Don't preach a dead grace message. Then it's just as well as you preach the law. I, I want to challenge a few preachers tonight. If you want to say you preach grace, you've got to go for miracles, brother. Amen. Because now I read in Galatians chapter 3, He who does you supply you with His marvelous Holy Spirit and works wonders amongst you and powers, does He do so because of the law or because of your believing? By grace. Acts chapter 15 we just read. They testified about the miracles and the signs that God wrought because of the message of grace. So if we preach grace, just add the full thing. By grace, you get a miracle. By grace, you get healed. By grace, you get saved. By grace, you get your cancer going. By grace, you get the HIV leaving. By grace, you get your headaches going. By grace, you get the cancer dropping out. By grace, you get your money being supplied. By grace, get the full grace message. It's a the message of grace is a message of miracles, of signs and of wonders. If there's no power, it's just another gospel. It's not the true one. Sorry if I got to say it so loud, but it's true. Ephesians 2, we're just going to read the, the King James Bible starting at verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, you too, don't look so holy, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Grace. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come. This is now. 
he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness Paul says to the Ephesians church in the ages to come in other words that wasn't for his time he said there'll still be people right. coming in the future that will know the full content of the grace yeah. there it is man there it is right. there it is did you get it there he says that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself what is it it's a gift of God okay can you help me come let's add something on the board what is it that we can add on the board here tonight the gift? It's a gift. It's a gift. Okay. It's, a gift it's, it's good. It's good enough. It's a gift. Did you see the kindness there? Yeah. Okay. So we have the kindness. We have the grace. And you know, he says, in the ages to come, that is for us. Yeah. So there's going to be a generation, I believe it's us, that's going to understand the full content Amen. and the full release of the grace of God that will work signs, wonders and miracles by a supply of the Holy Spirit we have never seen if we will not get entangled with yokes. If we will not go back to the law. If we will stay in the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. Freedom of the Holy Spirit. And he calls that a supply. I said that previously, maybe I should just mention it again. When I got that revelation, I was preaching in the Hartfield Arena a couple of months ago, and the revelation struck me. I wasn't preaching on this, I was preaching on spiritual warfare, you know, and just putting things straight. And I said, did you know how many great countries lost battles because they had no supplies? Did you know the little German countries came and they took over because they had a constant supply of armory? You know, and the Britons just got killed because they had no supply. There was no supply of armor. You know, come on, people. They, the people didn't bring them guns. They were the biggest army. You know, 100,000 in one day died because of no supplies. Drowning in the mud, man. Here comes the Germans, so small, but they get some guns. They just take over because of a constant supply. Now, the Bible says, he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit to do what? To do signs and wonders and miracles. Wah, wah, wah. Constant supply of the Holy Ghost. (laughs) There's no shortage. It's a constant supply. People, that's what we need. We need that constant supply. Where does this constant supply come from? Don't be idiots. Don't be senseless. Don't be stupid. Don't go back and get a yoke on your shoulder of bondage, but stay free. How do I stay free? By living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, singing in the Spirit, operating by the Spirit, living in the Spirit. Be spiritual. Is that okay? Right, let's go to Acts chapter 14. Hoo, 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 hoo. Now at Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went into the Jewish synagogue together and spoke with such power that a great number, both of Jews and Greeks, believed uh, became Christians. But the unbelieving Jews who rejected their message aroused the Gentiles and embittered their minds against the brethren. So Paul and Barnabas stayed on there for a long time, speaking freely and fearlessly and boldly and this is what God is giving me right now at this moment of time in the history of humanity to freely and boldly did what these people did boldly in the Lord who continued to bear testimony to the word of his grace granting signs and wonders to be performed by their hands and now I need somebody to help me shout in this house The word of grace must produce. Science. Wonders. I think this is a bit tough for some people. People think the word of grace is just to take you out into liberty where you can sin as you want to. No, Paul says, does this mean I can sin? No, it says I can sin not. 
You know, people think the grace message is to just say, ah, well, live as you want to. No, brother, there's still a life on the inside of you that cries out for holiness and purity and perfection. But the word of grace is more than just taking you out of the law. The word of grace says, hey, you can be healed without pain. Try again. The word of grace is you can be saved without the law. The word of grace is you can lose your cancer without going to a doctor. The word of grace is you can get rid of your HIV without taking tablets. The word of grace is you can be liberated without paying a price. You can become out of slavery without being bored because you were washed in the blood, bored with a price. You are free. Stand in this freedom. Don't get this yoke of bondage. Now, three scriptures on yokes. Three scriptures on grace equals signs, wonders, and miracles. On the word of any two or three witnesses, it shall be established. So we've established a few things here tonight. We've established that people have yokes that takes them out of freedom. The freedom is living in the spirit. Living in the spirit means taking the full message of grace. Taking the full message of grace means I will have a supply of miracles, signs and wonders continuously in my life. Come on. Years ago, I read a book, Rhythm of Miracles. I think Kenneth Copeland wrote it years ago when he was a young man. Living in a rhythm of miracles, man. I love it. I love it. But what is this yoke? Luckily for us, there's a prophecy in the book of Isaiah 10 and 27. In that day. Now, I know if people read it in Isaiah and they don't read the New Testament, they they think of the Babylonians and the Syrians. The scripture would take people that are theologians to the Syrians and to the Babylonians. Uh But because of what I just read, I'm going to take it into the New Testament. In that day, so Paul says there's going to come a day. Uh In that day, the yoke shall be destroyed and taken and lifted off of your shoulders. Because of the anointing. Stand in the freedom and don't be entangled again with the yoke. We discovered that the yoke is the law. And we discovered that the freedom is by the Holy Spirit. We discovered that this supply of the Holy Spirit is power, signs, wonders, and miracles. We discovered that this whole thing is operated by grace and faith. It is a free gift of God. By the kindness of God is there for us. Then we discover this word of grace must produce signs, wonders, and miracles. And the yoke is destroyed and lifted off because of the anointing. So what is the anointing? It's the Holy Spirit. It's simple, eh? But if we hear it over and over again, it'll help us to go for the right stuff. And not try and work for miracles. Not try and pray and, you know, fast ourselves so skinny that we'll have to jump under a shower to get wet. To just get an anointing. The anointing is... (laughs) Fast for the right stuff. Fast to worship God. Fast to get your spiritual ears tuning. Fast so that your flesh will go down and your spirit man will rise up. There's good reasons to fast. You've got to fast. But don't try and fast for anointing and don't try and fast for the gifts. It's free. You can't earn it. You can't earn the power. It's by grace. Okay? So the yoke shall be destroyed and lifted because of the anointing. Here's the proof. Here comes Jesus. Out of the desert. Being tempted of the devil for 40 days. Come back, walk right into the synagogue, take the scroll, roll it open to the book of Isaiah. Found chapter 21, there were no chapters in those days. Found the place where it is written and he read it out loud. The spirit of the Lord is now upon me for he has anointed me. To preach the gospel to the poor. To open the eyes of the blind. To bind up the brokenhearted, To set at liberty them that are captive. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he sat down, rolled up the scroll and said, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. What did Jesus say? He said, you know what? I'm anointed because the Holy Spirit is upon me. Okay, now upon you is different than within you. Okay, if I put something in the pulpit, I must put it in the pulpit. 
But if I put something upon the pulpit, I put it up on the pulpit. Okay? So Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is upon me. That's what's making me the anointed called the Christ. And because of that, I can now preach the gospel. I can now heal. I can now open blind eyes. Oh, man. I can now get the hurt out. Oh, brother, I've been so hurt. Oh, I've been hurt, hurt. Yes, I've been hurt. I've been so hurt. He can take the hurt out. He can set the captives free. I am free to run. So the anointing on the Christ was there to heal, to open blind eyes, to take the hurt out and set the captives free. Freedom by the Holy Spirit Powers, miracles, grace, signs. I hope you're going to get the message. It's so simple, but you get it. No yokes, okay? So the word of grace must produce the miracles. The yoke will be destroyed because of the Holy Spirit. So here comes Jesus. The Holy Spirit is upon me, and that's why I can now do this stuff. I can now heal the sick. I can now raise the dead. I can now cleanse the lepers. But here comes the good news. This was all history. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You, 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 but you. But you, 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 but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and then you shall be witnesses unto me. Okay. What did they witness about the signs and the wonders that God wrought because of what? Because of the word of grace. Come on, people, say grace. Grace. I got to take God's grace. Grace. Freedom Freedom. in the Holy Spirit. Oh, man, um, this is basic stuff. But you know, you know how many people never got to the basics? They try to reach the highest step in the letter and get their DHPH, XLD, HDDDDD degrees. You know, I mean, I'm amazed, you know. If you meet a preacher now, next week he's a doctor. And everybody's now doctors. I got from doctor to professor just promoted by the media, man. Uh, I mean, but is it funny how people want to, you know, we want to be so learned. But we can't get the sick healed. We can't get the HIV cleaned. We can't get the cancers out. Come on, people, somebody help me. We are so bound with laws and rituals. You can't do that. Paul says, why come? You're going back to those beggarly elements like touch not, do not, feel not. How come you want to go back to this beggarly stuff when you have been set free by the blood of the cross of Jesus Christ? We are free, man. Grace. Okay. <laughs> Wee wee, ha ha. So the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, and we have that. I think we need to go to Zechariah. This. <laughs> I must preach, Lord. <laughs> ah, why does it happen now? Ooh, have you ever started sweating when it's not hot or something? No. Ah, I don't know why. Maybe God just want to. Put some emphasis on the word. Man, I'm getting drunk. (laughs) This addition of the bowl to the candlestick. Oh, Lord, help me now. I can't see it. Causing it, causing it to yield a ceaseless supply of oil. Oh, that's where you were supposed to now spit your false teeth out and pull your wig off and Listen, then he said to me, this addition of the bowl to the candlestick, causing it to yield a ceaseless supply of oil. Man, 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 man. From the olive trees is the word. Okay. Of the Lord to Sarah Bible saying, not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, of whom the oil is a symbol, says the Lord of hosts. Now, you've got to get this. What does he say? This ceaseless supply of oil. What is it? It's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So it's not by power. 
I remember in the 70s we sang, It's not Baba, it's not Baba, Baba, my spirit. Remember? Okay. It's not Baba, it's not Baba. That's when we got the Holy Ghost jigs there. You remember? Of which the ceaseless supply of oil is the symbol. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, I want to get somewhere tonight. And dear Father in heaven, help us to get there. Okay. Ooh. Ceaseless. In other words, continuous. Supply of oil. He said, that is the Holy Spirit. That is, the, that is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. What did he say in Galatians 3? He who constantly supplies you with his continuous supplies you with his Holy Spirit and does wonders and miracles. Does he do it by you obeying the law or by believing the grace message? So now, the supply of oil, the ceaseless continuous supply, will show you it's not might or power, but by that Spirit. But he calls that whole thing, Ooh, he calls that the word to Sarah Babel. This is the word. Now, what is this word to Sarah Babel? Jibababa, haba. Let's turn around. For who are you, O great mountain? Before Sarah Babel, he shall bring forth the finishing gable stone with loud shoutings of the people crying, Grace, Grace. So the word to Sarah Babel was, Grace, Grace. And what did that word do? It brought a continuous supply of oil, which is the symbol of the Holy, Holy Spirit, man. Man, man, I, I, I want to bless you tonight. You know, we take the, the book, Dear, from Genesis to Malachi, and we say that's Old Testament. We throw it away. Then we take Matthew to, to Revelation. We say that's the New Testament. No, no. The only difference between the Old and the New is the law. So the only portion that you were redeemed from is the law. Not the books. Not the books. The law part. What is the law part? The one that says do to get. And don't do to stay. Moreover, the Lord said to Moses... Take the best spices, liquid myrrh. You, you got to get this tonight. Liquid myrrh, 500 shekels. Sweet scented cinnamon. Sweet scented cinnamon. This is not a good thing. It's 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 not a Sweet scented cinnamon, half as much, 250 shekels. Fragrant calamus. Mm. Fragrant calamus. Okay. And of cassia. 500 shekels in terms of the sanctuary shekel and of olive oil. Then take this whole thing and mix it with some olive oil. And you shall make of these a holy anointing oil. Holy anointing oil. A perfume compounded after the art of the perfumer. It shall be sacred. And you shall anoint the tent of meeting with it. And the ark of the testimony and the showbread table and all its utensils, lamps and utensils, all those incense and the altar of burnt offerings already and the laver and his base. You shall sanctify them that they may be most holy. Whoever and whatever touches them must be holy. Set apart to God. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and sanctify them that they may minister to me as priests. And say to the Israelites, this is a holy anointing oil, symbol of the Holy Spirit, sacred to me alone throughout your generations. Chapter 37. He also made the anointing oil symbol of the Holy Spirit, and the pure, fragrant incense after the perfumer's art. Chapter 40. 
Verse 9. You shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that's in it and shall consecrate it and its furniture and it shall be holy. You shall anoint the altar of burnt offering and all these utensils, consecrate them and set them apart and the altar, they shall be most holy. You shall anoint the laver and his base and consecrate it. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tent of meeting, wash them with water. You shall put on Aaron the holy garments and anoint and consecrate him so he may serve me as priest and you shall bring his sons and put long and sleeve tunics on them. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father that they may minister to me as priests for their anointing shall be to them for an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Now we know that their priesthood were not everlasting because Hebrews chapter 4 through verse 7 says they had an ending priesthood but we have a priesthood that's everlasting. So here's a prophetic word in it as well. Verse 34. Then the cloud, the Shekinah, God's visible presence covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Holy Father. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says the following. If the ministration of the letter that was written on stones were so glorious that Moses had to put a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not behold his face because of the vanishing glory, the glory that could not abide. How much more? How much greater glory? We who are ministers of the Spirit and not of the letter. Moses, take all the stuff, take the myrrh, the sweet-scented cinnamon, the fragrant calamus, the cassia, mix it there with olive oil, and it shall be sacred, it shall be a holy anointing oil. Then Moses, take that oil and anoint everything. After he anointed everything, get Aaron and his sons, anoint them. He says, and then later get the sons of them and anoint them. And he says, and when Moses anointed them with a holy sacred oil, the glory of the Lord wah, fell on that tabernacle. The whole place was filled with the glory. Now it says, under that ministry of the law that brought no freedom, that brought no liberty, that didn't flow with a continuous supply of the Holy Spirit, that didn't add a ceaseless supply of oil that produced wonders, signs, and miracles. How much greater glory we who now minister the Holy Spirit. What is this ministry? The ministry of grace. How much greater glory must we have that now ministers grace, that ministers the Spirit? Don't you think we should get a greater glory? Don't you think God needs to appear in the house? So he says, take the oil, mix it. So uh, we mix the oil. So we put in, but we're going to put more in. But this cloth is soggy wet. Okay. We put in liquid myrrh. We put in sweet scent and cinnamon. We put in fragrant calamus. We put in cassia and we put the base of olive oil in it according to the perfumer artist and the fragrance now you open it and I leave it here within a while the fragrance starts spreading through the through the church you know and people after the anointing service you stay here till everybody's gone and the fragrance hang in the room now for three weeks in a row people come to me and said Kubis while you were preaching that fragrance just came in the room how many smelled it? A lot. Without the oil here. Hmm? So Wednesday, I was in my prayer room. And I, I, I was just praying there. And, uh, uh, and I, I made a little program there. And uh, as I made the little program, it, you know, I had to get a little higher because it was in a dark my prayer room and, and I wanted to make this video clip and I realized you know I'm in a very uncomfortable position to get my eye into the lens so I took two Bibles from the shelf there and I sat on the Bibles I mean you stand on the word I can sit on the word you know so I sat on the word 
to get my height right. But these two Bibles were lying on a box. And in the box is a Bible that was so full of gold here when Sylvania was here a couple of years ago. You know? So afterwards, I took that box. And when I took the box, it was full of oil. But I didn't really immediately realize, but my Bibles were lying on this box. So they, they must be full of oil. So I, and the smell was like, woohoo. And I rubbed it off and I went in there and Laura came in and I said, please get some tissue. So we took the oil off because I just want to clean the box, man. And all of a sudden I said, hey, you are angry. He's something, he's so young. Something is happening because this oil is sweeter than anything I've ever smelled in my life. Now, if God is not interested in oil, why would he drop oil on my Bible box? Okay. Theologian, would you help me? If God is not interested in oil, why would God pour a whole bucket of oil on my Bible box? So there's the oil. So I want to rub the oil off. So, uh, so I come out here. So I say, look, look at the oil on my hands. Smell this oil. And when we looked, my hands are full of gold. I mean, nuggets. Big stuff, man. There it's coming again, man. There it's coming again. There, there, there's a little one there. Not, you know, you're, 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 you're not much, but there it's coming again. So gold started appearing. Big nuggets on my hands. So we ran to the back here, and they put the cameras out. You know, and all my fingers is just gold. Say, now it's not oil, now it's gold too. You know? And then God started speaking to me. He said, you know, I'm just as interested in the oil as when I told Moses to make the oil. Did you know that I still grow the olives? Did you still that I still grow the myrtle tree? Do you still know that I still grow all the cassias? Do you still know that I grow all these trees? I said, wow. He said, you still know I still grow them so that you can still make oil? And he said, then take incense. You know? So, man, but not just any rubbish. Not those Muslim sticks. And Hindi sticks that make you get headache and stuff, you know? No, 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 no. The stuff that is made according to the recipe. So you get them. They call them sanctuary. They call them cathedral. They call them benedictos. And you know, all sorts of Greek and Italian. So I take all of them and I mix them together. They made according to the recipe. He says, and they burnt it and they anointed the people and the glory of the Lord came in the room. But is is God really interested in this anointing stuff? Oh, oh yeah. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters and by green pastures. He makes me lead, lay down. He anoints my head with oil. Oh, he anoints your head with oil. Did you know that the book of Ecclesiastes says, let oil never lack on your head. That doesn't mean the grease stuff that you know what was it? What they call it? Gel, creams, bro cream stuff. No. Who were they in the 60s? Remember? Hey man, you know, you couldn't go to school without the camelin and the bro cream on your head, you know? You look like you just came out of the mechanic shop when you went to school. Who were they? Were they aluminium combs and you know, yeah, man, yeah, wah. Yeah. Hey, it's a wonderful, hey, why? You know, grease. Remember? It's not that, not, not that oil that he's talking about. He says, Psalm 92, verse 10 and 11. He says, You have anointed me with fresh oil. You have exalted my horn like a wild ox. Oh, my excessive strength is exalted in your presence. God wants you to be anointed, man. And he gave us a physical proof of a spiritual truth that we can anoint each other as a symbol and get the true glory to manifest in the midst of the people of Almighty God. Mm. Smell it. <laughs> okay. Verse 20. Are you in verse 20? They are precious treasures and oil. 
in the dwelling of the wise. But a self-confident and foolish man swallows it up and wastes it. He who earnestly seek after and crave righteousness, mercy and loving kindness will find life in addition to righteousness and honor. Why do you read this proverb, Quivis? Well, he says, in the house of the wise, there is oil. Man, abundance. He says, but apart from that, this is how you can find the oil in the house of the wise. If you seek righteousness. Now, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9 says, Therefore has God thy God anointed thee with the oil of joy above thy fellows, because you loved righteousness and hated wickedness. The context of this scripture is, if I love and seek righteousness, God says, you know what's, what's following? The anointing of oil above your fellows. In other words, there will be people in your midst that will see you getting more than they ever thought they could get. They will say, why is he doing that? Why, 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 why can he pray for the sea? Why, why is he getting miracles? Why is he getting financial breakthroughs? Why is he getting healing? Why does the cancers disappear in his presence? Oh, because he loves righteousness. So he's anointed with oil of joy above his fellows. In other words, he goes up above his peer group because he knows the power of oil in the house of the wise. So he goes to the almighty God who is all wisdom and wisdom is at the beginning of everything. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if I walk in that wisdom, imagine what follows, oil. So Hebrews 1, 9, thou hast anointed him with oil above his fellows. Now, This scripture is quoted from Psalm 45. Man, this is awesome. My heart overflows with a goodly theme. I address my psalm to a king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. You are fairer than the children of men. Grace, King James, is poured into thy lips. Therefore God has blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. In thy majesty, ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. We had all those words already. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness. Okay, now this is the third one. We just had it in Proverbs 21 and Hebrews 1, and here it comes again. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Verse 8. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia. Oh, out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. So if anybody can take it and say, Oh Lord, there's something in here that maybe we haven't seen, but we want to see it tonight. Okay. I will sing of thy mercy and loving kindness of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness from generation to generation. For I have said, Mercy and loving kindness shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness will you establish in the very heavens. Hmm? You have said, I made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Your seed I will establish forever. I will build up your throne for all generations. Selah. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I just want to throw that one in again. Remember Acts 7 and Acts 15? I will come and again build that thing of David. Okay. What was that? The grace. Which is what? Signs, wonders, miracles. Which is what? The continuous supply of oil. Okay. I will build up that thing. Okay. Oh, man. Verse 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and loving kindness and truth before your face. Blessed, (laughs) happy, fortunate, to be envied are the people who know the joyful sound. Now remember the oil of joy. Joyful sound who understand and appreciate the spiritual blessings. Symbolized by the feast, they walk, O Lord, in the light and favor of your countenance. Okay? In your name, they rejoice all the day and in your righteousness are exalted for you are the glory of their strength and by your favor, our horn is exalted and we walk with uplifted faces. Verse 19, once you spoke in a vision, 
to your devoted ones and said, I have endowed one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from among the people. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. Now this is the stuff that he says in Acts 7 and 15 he will restore. My faithfulness and my mercy and my loving kindness shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted. Great power and prosperity shall be conferred upon him. Hmm? Verse 26. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God. My father, my father, my God, my God. Elijah, Elijah. <laughs> and the rock of my salvation. Hmm. Verse 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not break off from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. Hallelujah. Go to Acts chapter 20 in closing. And now, brethren, I commit you to God. I deposit you in his charge. I'm entrusting you to his protection and care. I commend you to the word of his grace. Man, this is too much for some religious heads. Paul says, I am going to commit you to God. I'm going to deposit you in his charge. I am going to commend you to the word of his grace. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, Lord, here's sorrow. I commit him. I deposit him in your charge. And now I commend him to the word of your grace. I'm going to do it. Oh, who are you? Well, just somebody that understands grace. Paul and Barnabas stood up and testified how God did signs, wonders, and miracles because of the word of His grace. Paul and Barnabas said, God confirmed the word of grace with signs, wonders, and miracles. Did you get that? He says, Moses, take the oil with the myrrh, the sweet-scented cinnamon, the fragrant calamus, the cassia, the aloes, the sacred oil, the aloes, and mix it according to that recipe. Put it in olive oil, man, and then get the people there. Consecrate them, and they shall be consecrated. Anoint them, and they shall be holy. You know what? He says, but right now you're in the new. Let's commend you to the word of his grace. Let's deposit you into his church. Here we have the sweet scented cinnamon, the calamus, the myrrh, the fragrant, the aloes. And we're going to take it tonight while we're going to burn the incense mixed to the recipe of the perfumist. It's the right stuff here, man. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for symbols for types, for ideas that you've put into the heart of man to get the full result of a small little word called grace. We pray tonight that you will confirm the word of grace with supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your holy child. Anointed, anointed. Holy Father, this is a miracle anointing service. So our hearts scream out for anointing. This is what this meeting is all about, a miracle anointing service. And for me as the man of God to commit, to give them, to deposit them in the charge of God. To commend them to the word of grace. Grace, 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 grace. Father, I speak grace to this house tonight. 
I speak great grace. And as this anointing all touch the heads of people, let there be a divine flow of the supernatural. Let there be a divine impartation of the Holy Ghost. Let there be a divine flow of the supernatural. Let miracles, signs and wonders come into the room. Oh God, restore, renew, revive. In the name of Jesus, revive, restore, renew, rekindle the fires, bring power, bring signs, bring wonders, bring miracles, bring the supernatural into the house of the Lord. Right, we're going to anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Zap there, Father. Zap it, Abba. Father, I pray, sweet anointing oil of the Holy Ghost. Anointing oil of the Holy Ghost. Anointing oil of the Holy Ghost. Father, anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. Sweet anointing of the Holy Ghost. I commend you to God's grace. I commend you to His grace. I commend you to God's 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 grace. Who is like unto Him never ending in death? Been anointed. But look to the cross You are Lord And for our inheritance Give us the lost You are Lord Show your power, show your power Oh Lord, oh Lord our God Show your power oh Well I trust you've enjoyed that now for you. Father, I pray for all our viewers. Touch them, heal them, anoint them, that grace be upon their lives. Amen. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.